Dave. Oh, yeah. Welcome Good back. You. You've been gone about three years. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't yeah. seen you. I haven't been here, but my inventory was. Yes, you had but, your inventory, and you were tied up yeah. and couldn't get a, I, to go two, to two the shops. Shows. But now I'm I'm back again. And yeah. you're so busy. It's a, it, it, it's fantastic that uh, you brought some fabulous things to Thank the you. show. One that caught my eye as I was walking out oh. the side at, outside there. I said, "Holy cow! What a morganite! It's an unbelievable." Uh, it's from Afghanistan. Yes. And what's interesting is, the you see the the aqua core is yeah, inside. Yeah, that's right. So it started off with an aquamarine when it grew. That's right. Uh, you know, it, uh, the blue color comes from iron. That's right. Iron ions, and somehow this solution must have changed uh, during the growth to uh, manganese. Ions. That's right. That's, that's right. why it turned into. To morganite, it's actually which like a, a bicolored, uh, uh, bicolored yeah. barrel. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely. It's That's fabulous, it and not only uh, what you just pointed yeah. out—the color, uh, the colors, but the size of the crystal and the perfection. Yeah, it. That's There's enormous. No damage. Yeah. There's it's no it's damage. A, the aesthetics yes. uh, of a miniature, basically. Yes. Just in a, in a huge, different size. Huge, yeah. fabulous museum size, and then yeah. this morganite's no slouch. That's a beautiful cluster too, as well. It's beautiful. Oh, it's like a, a, it's a good size. morganites it coming out. Doesn't have an aquamarine core. Yes. No, oh, they're, they're fabulous. It's a beautiful piece. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm seeing here is a lot of lovely things and everything, but you told us that you've got other things of a high degree that we must get. Yes. Yeah, yes. and that's at, at the Westward Look exactly. uh, show that's coming up. So next week. some really fantastic. Uh, pieces and yeah you're welcome to look at them and film them no oh, by all means congratulations and then we'll thank you do the Glad rest of the film came by and uh we see each other next week again at the exactly. yeah. okay. thanks, thanks man. Man. how you doing hi <laughs> hi dave nice Good. Nice to see Another you. Year. So happy be, to be back again. Thank Always you. look forward to the show. And needless to say, even though I don't collect minerals, I love the minerals. I love the people that have the minerals. And there's always something very new. And you have some real fine things in this room, Thank don't you? you? Thank you. Yeah, so we'd like Thank to you. go through some of these things. Let's start off with this case right here. Uh, a minute ago, that caught my eye right there. That aquamarine has many terminations to it. It's perfect. There isn't even a flea bite on it. And the termination on the top is so Very, very lustrous. Yes. It's fabulous. Dave, this is a, a very old piece. Yeah, I understand uh, it was that because a long time I knew ago that didn't come out recently. Yes. That was one of a major discovery when they got this out, what, 25, 30 years ago? At least, yeah. at least. Okay. Not, nothing like this. Nothing like that's come. It's totally different. Okay, this one here is a beautiful cluster. And if you can open that door, it's all perfect. There's no damage on that whatsoever. Smoky quartz, lapidolite, feldspar. Just a beautiful cluster. And when did that come out? This is also an old piece. Okay, it's an it old piece. It's an old collection. Okay. And uh, we just had it cleaned. Okay. So this has a helix. If you uh, here, let me take it. Do it this way there. The center, which is basically a spiral, a natural spiral. Yeah. That from the bottom to I the top of the crystal. I don't know if you could pick that up, Brian. And See that little thing coming up right in there. You may not be able to pick it up. That's very unusual. If you don't get them often in aquamarines, yeah. and this again is from the mine in Shigar, Gilgit, northern Pakistan. And okay. the, 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 the Shigar mine, this has different pockets. So this oh, here is the it shows up well on that yeah, look at that. And this angle. has this greenish uh, tinge to it. Tinge to it. Yeah. I think just like the cluster they just filmed, that's also from the Shigar mine in uh, northern Shigar. Pakistan. Yeah, the, the, those are sugar, but the different pockets. So yes. Uh, the color is. This morganite, it is from Badakhshan, okay. which is famous for lapis lazuli in Afghanistan. And the first time we got this big size of morganite. It's it's not only big and beautiful. It's exceedingly hard to get morganite. 
that doesn't have damage on it. They all have something, mm -hmm. whether it's a crack. There's always a problem with morganite. And I know a lot about morganite crystal specimens over the years and everything, but this is totally complete on the matrix. There's no cracks running through it. There's a haze running through mm -hmm. it, but there's no, oh, well, it's nice, but it has a crack right. in it. There's none of that. It's all, all these beautiful termination uh, faces on it. Then it's uh, uh, in uh, combined with a nice smoky quartz here. You have a little bit of white albite here. There's some white albite there. And you have some tourmaline here. So it's a beautiful small cabinet specimen. I've never been in a room yet where I saw two highly important ruby crystals on matrix. Both of them are winners. They're perfect miniatures for a very advanced case. And then the add spice to it, the way you set up the display is that beautiful big gem Pakistani aquamarine, aquamarine crystal. But what really caught me is the intensity of color in the ruby and some translucency to it, because they could actually make very nice cabs out of that. Yes. And usually, uh, these things always come just about opaqueish, and those with the matrix like that, very aesthetic, wonderful piece. And, and nice size. The size is very oh, good too. Perfect miniatures. Yes. This is from uh, Jal from Jagdilik in Afghanistan. Very good. But yeah. the color is very similar to the one that you're getting from Maguk. That's correct. And. Um, Many a times people are confused with the uh, faceted gems or even uh, crystals from Afghanistan. They could say that I can swear that that's from Myanmar, from Maguk. It's that not. But if you look on the map and you, you know, try to map it from one end to the other, from Afghanistan to Burma, it seems like it's just running Interesting. It, very, very similar okay. uh, in, in the direction where both the mines are. Interesting. But they're thousands okay. of miles apart. Yeah. This is from a very old uh, collection from China. Okay. And we acquired it recently. And what we find very spectacular in this piece that all the associated minerals, which is the calcite, they're all perfect. Yes. The color of the real girl is also stunningly ruby beautiful, red. ruby beautiful red. red. Ruby and red. And no damage. Yep. And around at the back, you see uh, real girl crystals as well. Yeah. On or if you would like to turn it around? Well, just, just a few. You got like it? Okay. Yes. Okay. And yeah. it can be displayed. This doesn't mean anything. Yeah. This is yeah. just the back of the spat. But this, this here like that is just fabulous. And let me introduce you right here. Oh, my God. That's to this fantastic. stunningly beautiful aquamarine. And we did not have the time to make a label for it. But it's, this has uh, been named as the Peaks of Pakistan. What because part of Pakistan? From northern Pakistan, Sugar which Valley. is okay. Sugar Valley in okay. Gilgit. Very good. And it's where you have some of the highest peaks in the world after Mount Everest and Mount K2. Wow. And these are found in the glaciers. Okay. And this looks like a piece of frozen blue ice. It's just wonderful. The, the natural etching of that crystal that etched in the ground, not out of the ground, cleaning. A lot of people think when they clean them, you know, they, they etch them out. No, 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 no. But it's natural. It just was cleaned. That's yes, all. It was just, clean. Just it was a little bit of like the wide specks of albite here and there. That's yeah. it. Nothing yeah. Clear. And it's, it's a, pr a beautiful large size oh, and you have wonderful. all these peaks, the terminations. That's right. They remind me of mountain peaks. Yeah. Because when you Water. go to that part of the world, that's what it looks like. That's right. So hence the name, the Peaks of Pakistan. Yeah. Well, Dave, uh, we are very pleased to show you the, our crown jewel, so to speak. Okay. It's a very special specimen that we had to go over to northern Pakistan and hand carry it back. Okay. It wasn't an easy trip, but now that we see it in the showcase, it was well worth it. I'd like to introduce you to wow, this stunning that. beauty. And it has been named the crown of Paprok. Again, when you see That's the size, it's, it's a pretty large specimen as well balanced. Yeah. It's got white, pure white clevelandite and uh, several crystals of uh, the tourmaline branching out from the Very main, so. main crystal. 
And you mentioned you examined it very carefully. Yes. No broken no crystals, broken no, crystals repairs, no repairs, no repairs. It's all totally intact. Yes. And trimmed, but it's totally intact. Everything around it is just a, a perfect balance. And it's got smoky quartz on one side, exactly. which gives it a good uh, contrast. Yeah, the contrast is fabulous. And it has all together around 13 crystals. Wow. Okay. So, Truly a museum and top collector type item. Yeah, you, you, you get over this way. Yeah. Well, congratulations Thank once you. again. You, you you really did a hell of a good job. This. Thank you. Thank you all for the time. It just gets better and better and better. You worked hard, and you know what you're doing. And Thank David you. And Brian, thank you for yeah. that. Thank I appreciate you. It. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you so much, Brian. Thanks. How you doing? Good, Dave. How's things going? Good. And so, I understand you hit a major pocket uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah, and yeah. Got, right after the Munich show, we hit this pocket. It's oh, a really, that's fantastic. really exciting discovery. So this, this is the best large piece that came out of the pocket. The pocket produced about 70 tons of material. Most of it good. was damaged because it was a top surface pocket. I see. But a few exceptional pieces uh, survived. Oh, that's this, this is the best large piece that survived. I see. Typical see, museum all the, all piece. All the tips are perfect yeah. on it. And then the, the, the whole balance of the specimen, it just, it's all over. Sometimes yeah. you get these things, it's just one side, but this is a nice cluster. The pocket also produced some really large milky crystals, and this okay. was the largest or the longest crystal in length. This okay. crystal weighs about 400 pounds. Wow. And typical of this mine, uh, when the crystals get over two or three feet, they, they tend to be milky rather than jemmy. I see. And Beautiful. then I have the two best pieces to show you, the two best okay. clusters from the pocket. Okay. This is the... Wow, look at that. Magnificent. Look at this thing. This is... And this just classic. came out several weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah, and this is classic classic material similar to the 1986 pocket at the yeah. McEarl mine, which yeah. produced pretty much the world standard for this type of quartz. Exactly. Clear rock crystal quartz. This is, this is the finest cluster that came out of the pocket. Wow. So out of 70 tons of material, this is the, the finest piece. Wonderful. It, it, it boggles the mind over the years how much quartz has come out of Arkansas. Yeah. It, um, and, and they're still finding it. Yeah. Near the, so the in 2009, my company purchased the McEarl mine. And we've been mining it since 2009. But it turns out um, that probably the best area of the mountain was 100 feet to the south which we just figured out a month ago. So even though we've been mining for five years and haven't discovered much, a month ago we went 100 feet south to do test, uh, test uh, pits and test trenching. And during our first initial phase, we discovered this incredible find less than five feet under the surface. Fantastic. And it was actually an old government mine during World War II for oscillator quartz. For the gem quartz, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah this is yeah. an exciting find for the show. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Amir, how you doing? Thank you very much. Thanks nice for coming. seeing you again, and uh, you, you have lovely things uh, in your room here, and one in particular I consider a very major, major specimen, and it's a morganite. This one was mined uh, this year around September. Okay. And... Uh, I went to Skardu in October, mm -hmm. and the miner had it hidden his stuff and thing, and it came out, they came out, and I got it from the miner from there, and it's uh, from the Shingus area, mm -hmm. which is from between Skardu and Stagnala. It's uh, right in the middle of those, and a beautiful valley, and the pockets are very hard to reach, but this piece was found oh, there. That's fantastic. And as soon as I saw it, I fall in love with it. And, you know. This is a, a wonderful piece, in addition to the fact that it's from Pakistan. Pakistan, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank really you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Jay. Hello. I'm doing fine. Been in here the other day, and you got some lovely things we'd like to film. Thank you. This is an extraordinary 
unusual am and it's all terminate, it's all perfect. This is all amethyst. <laughs> Then it goes into this black coating. What do you think that's, uh, what is I that? I think it's iron uh, deposit on the top of the quartz. Okay. I mean, you know, iron or, or manganese. Yes. Uh, but I believe it's iron since the amethyst is tainted by uh, yeah. uh, iron two, okay? Yes. Iron, uh, iron three, actually. Yeah. And uh, the this interesting calcite. thing is, uh, so is the calcite, the, the these, uh, lines on the, yeah, on the calcite, that. okay? Oh, that's a lovely thing. Never seen any. So this is what you call a common type of mineral association, yeah. but unique the next way in the formation, uh, formation, in the combination. That's a lovely thing. I really like that. You want something different in your collection, you've got it. You mentioned this was disclosite. I've never yes. seen anything like this, to be honest with you. Not that I've seen everything, but what's so fine about this, not only is it aesthetic, but they're very large crystals, sure. because the ones from Mexico uh -huh. were always about like uh, that and mm -hmm. so forth. This is very, very... This unique. is yeah. from Iran, uh, district of Anarak. Okay. And uh, we're starting to see more of these minerals from, uh, from okay. Iran, which is a... It's a great country for minerals. So, oh, yeah. Um, so we're starting to see little by little, a little bit of cerezite, uh, yes. this glowizite, and yeah. you know. Um, well, that's great. No, oh, that's that's a lovely thing. Never seen anything like that in this mineral species, this glowizite. Beautiful. Okay, what you have is all the amethyst cover, co actually covering the entire scalahedron calcite. Yep. Yes. And it, uh, it's just a lovely thing. You just yep. don't see anything like that. You might see little ones or what have you, but this is a, a drastic large calcite that's been totally coated over with the amethyst crystals. Now, is this Brazil as well? No, this is uh, Artigas too. Uh, okay, um, okay. This is Uruguay. Uruguay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Lot. Take care. Bye bye. Mustafa. Thank you. How are you? Great to see <laughs> you again. Yeah. Uh, uh, you have some pieces in here that we need to record. Thank you. I'd yeah. love to see this out right here. Sure. Mm -hmm. That is a fabulous, fabulous brookite crystal. Thank you. It's actually total floater, pocket yes. floater, total doubly terminated. Okay. And the special thing about it is, of course, the size. The most important than That's the size right. is the grouping of the crystals. That's and right. You none of the crystals are damaged. You got damage. it. Yeah. And it's perfect. Mm -hmm. It looked like it was lab grown. Absolutely red perfect. Color as yeah, well. look at that. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, I mean they're really hard to get oh, undamaged. Yeah. You know, usually you do get sometimes large crystals, but yes. you get in a perfect. Position. How does this stand yes. against anything you had of yes. this size? Mm -hmm. Is this about as good as you've had of this size? N undamaged? I mean, undamaged to get it, I yeah. think it is. Like yeah. you know, yeah. in the past we had some larger pieces, yes. but with the damages, right. especially the grouping of little crystals around it, you always exactly. have a damage on it. Exactly. But it was Not really this. yeah on this one. This it's one, just it's a perfection. perfect. Yeah, absolutely. And this is fantastic. Yeah. Axonites on these matrix and a cluster like that, it's unbelievable. Should yeah, well, we open up the sure, case? Yeah. Yeah. I think what's so special about this was usually you get clusters of axonites. Yes. For France you get as well. But uh, on this one I think uh, the most important was we ha were having a, a single crystals on matrix. Exactly. And as you can see the wide bit of albites together oh, with the crystals fabulous. of uh, um, Axonite, the most important and special piece for me is the little one here with yes. a very um, interesting blue and green zoning inside, which is very, very Conceal, special. Concealed, yeah. Conceal inside. It's a the nice crystal. faint color, but it's yeah, in there. I yeah. wonder what that is. Actually, yeah, it's difficult that. to find out, but I think oh, it's very yeah, interesting be, oh, but to impossible. see two colors. But I mean, it was one off pocket production. Okay. And um, after that, there were a few pieces were coming, but they were all broken. This is actually yes. um, uh, the major pieces of the pocket, and, yes. which is undamaged, going to be fabulous. undamaged. You know, Absolutely so. fabulous. Mm -hmm. Never seen anything like that in that <laughs> mineral like that. <laughs> You even have a cut stone. Yeah, I always love to have the cut stone together with the uh, specimens because a lot of collectors appreciate that to have the cut uh, gemstone with the rough. Yeah. This is actually weighing 30 carat. 
the largest, I mean, we have ever come across for the Bessner site, oh, loop clean, okay. uh, where it's about 30 carat in That's size. That's fantastic. It's, uh, for the size and the quality yeah. of it, it's the, it's it's the largest we ever come across. Yeah. I mean, there might be few pieces in the world, but, you know, we've never seen larger piece than that and in this yeah. quality. Yeah. Beautiful. And That's as far great. as the matrix yeah. is concerned also, it's a really oh, good yeah. color inside, okay. you can see. Beautiful. Sure. And what I really like about the crystallization, crystallization and the combination. And the combination. combination. Oh yeah, it's a lovely thing. And it's just. Is perfect. this feldspar? What is that? This is feldspar. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, Adularia feldspar. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I mean, it has a good color as well. If you put a torch light, you can yeah. see through the color of the Besnesite. Right. side. To get the exact shape of the Besnesite, side, usually you do get it not perfect shape. Oh, but very on this much one, the shape so. Yeah, is, it's yeah. perfect. Really perfect. Beautiful. It's, it's Hexagonal crystal. Yeah. This is actually a new production. Again, in Badakhshan, Afghanistan, where the famous locality of lapis lazuli. This is actually found only five or four and a half months ago. Oh, I mean, usually okay. this pocket produces mostly tourmaline, but it yeah. was a major production that this year we got in combination with Danbrite. Yeah, that is uh, yeah. totally off the wall. Yeah. And not only Danbrite, but yes. it's a yellow Danbrite. Uh, yellow Danbrite. Yeah. rather than yeah. just a white one. White one. Yeah, yeah terminate, that's, that's actually terminated. Mm -hmm. That's a lovely yeah. large thumbnail. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh, I as far as I remember, 10 or 12 years ago, Herbo Boda, when he was visiting in Pakistan, yes. he only had one piece. I and I, I think I saw his collection in, in, in his collection. I think it's sold now. But after that, you know, the pocket produced again. So it's after 12 years, the wow. production, you know. How about and again, that? the combination pieces yeah. came again. No, that, that's a fabulous uh, thing. I love that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Dave, I actually have a few pieces under the table, which okay. I brought this year with me. Good. And I'd like to show you. Good. Yeah. Great. Sure. Yeah. Um, I like to show you an aquamarine which was produced just uh, a year before the production. What makes it oh. very special is the phantoms inside and the kind of needles. Yes. Yeah. This is wonderful. Yeah. I like Look the aesthetic of it, the way it's oh, shooting on the right matrix. Right? Perfectly you know, centered in that matrix. And the little garnet crystals on the matrix, okay. they're very small ones. See, I mentioned uh, to one other party that had yes. one of these, mm -hmm. what's uh, also so fine about beautiful gem aquamarine on the mm -hmm. top. Then it fades into a translucent uh, part of the crystal, and then it has some brown down here. So it's, That's it, right, it, it really yeah. adds color to it. Absolutely. Most of these just go from that to uh, just a light color. And Lighter ones, yeah. That's right. But that, yeah. it actually adds to the overall beauty of the mm -hmm. piece, and then being so perfectly on the matrix like yes. that. And another thing I appreciate about the specimen, you don't have any reheal cracks. Right. So common when mm -hmm. they're at the bottom or in right in the middle. You look at it. Right. Is that mm -hmm. crack? Well, maybe crack, but right. it reheal. Re this crack, is just perfect going down, yeah. and it's almost tricolor. It it really so is because of the yeah. yellowness and exactly. a bit of black inclusion. So you, you and as you it. said, the crack is very important. Most of the oh, pieces, yeah. if you see major pieces, oh, you always yeah. see from inside that, the line. crystal. Yeah, and I, a line. Yeah. It's all right. It's yes. a night, but this this thing's a jewel. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Badashan has been producing. You know, recently, you know. A lot of tourmalines, like yes. you saw the Damborite tourmaline yes. combination. Yeah. And what is so um, special about Badakhshan is it produces different type of tourmaline and different colors every very time. Good. Okay. So this year I managed to find two very fine pieces. Mm -hmm. One is this is my really favorite. Oh, my God, in combination with the tone. This is fabulous. What is I really oh, like the growth God. of the, the, the piece and it's a totally pocket floater. Piece. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, to get a tablet like this, yes. uh, just perfect with the crystal, fully yes. attached to it. Mm -hmm. It's a major thing because you got a, a very rare mineral next to a relatively mm -hmm. available mineral. So yes. the combination of two makes a huge difference. It makes because um, you can get the uh, her uh, uh, hamburgite, the hamburgite yes. uh, mm -hmm. singly now because That's there's right. quite a bit that came out. But to get them with the That's matrix of tourmaline, tourmaline itself, again. that's a wonderful And in combination, specimen. usually you do get composition. In combinations a lot but to get it in perfection exactly the way it sits really perfectly and the quality you, you know it's it. really hard to find yeah. you know that it it is aesthetic the tourmaline has a small repair but you know mm -hmm. if it's a major things like that exactly you know. and so, yeah. another from Barakshan has been producing a lot I mean it has a little bit of lower colors but I really like the aesthetic of it and especially when you put a torchlight 
you see a very deep blue. Yeah, that's a decolite blue. Indecolite blue yeah. on the top. Yeah. And then bottom with the green and pink. Yes. You know, you see very deep blue, you see. And the overall well, that the color. almost made it to um, uh, acrylate. Acrylate. And here, right. uh, it just still has a little color, but it's yes. very pretty. It's a, a beautiful bike. And the small crystals of hamburgite on oh, the side. Yeah, right here. Which is, again, you can see from the same pocket it's been producing in that? combination. Would you believe that? Small hamburgite. Yeah, a few little secondary crystals mm -hmm. here. Exactly. Thank you very much, Dave. Great job Appreciate done. It. Thank you Thanks for coming. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you so much. Wow. Yeah, this is gorgeous. They name Look this at this. The electric blue. Oh, Have you seen absolutely. The oh, it's beautiful. Just beautiful. So malachite. Yes. But this mine is not only good for the super top azurites. It has many other things that we will discover. That's what you're mentioning. And we've together. got to hear about a couple of these things that other than the beautiful aesthetic minerals, you have the super rare things. Yes, now they are finding fantastic brocantites. Okay. We have two examples here. Oh my goodness. Take this. This is... Oh, that's fantastic. Own it now what for John Samson White. Wow. He likes so much, he bought it. Okay. And it's like a jewel, as you see. Brocantite. Correct. Fabulous. What a perfect miniature. Uh-huh. Sharp crystals. Oh, just beautiful. Good terminations. Oh, wonderful. They found needles before, and right now, they decided to be better, and they found sharp crystals. You see that? Thick, and with uh, sharp terminations. Yeah. So everything. Yeah, oh, that is superb. Yeah, yeah, look at this. Yeah, look at how fat some of those crystals are. Should be trimmed. God, it's fantastic. a piece to be worked with. Mm -hmm. But the quality is wonderful. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So again, was best. Oh yeah, I don't it's remember seeing the brochantite of this quality. So Never. Two, two species for the moment. And yeah. We will see more. Yeah. Unbelievable. Okay. One. This is a different kind of uh, azurite. What is the interest of the, this azurite? The this contrast is... on white. Correct. Yeah. And you know what is the white? It's a mineral named dikite in the family of the clays. Okay. And you have a new species for milpillas, the dikite, giving a fantastic contrast with oh, the azurite. Wonderful. So even the clay is nice on that mine, mm -hmm. <laughs> or becomes nice, you know, by exactly. the contrast with the azurite. Yeah. We go what you mentioned before, mm -hmm. the largest, or one of the largest, it's always hard to say the largest, but at least one of the largest crystals existing of a very rare mineral species named Wolvertite. Okay, so I assume it's the darker of the two here, right? Correct. Yeah, so this is the crystal that Jordy's talking about. It's and that's the largest on one, record that you heard of. I will never say the largest because yeah. we never know, but one of the largest for one sure. One of the largest, okay. For sure. Okay. It's a vanadium and copper hydroxide mm -hmm. with some water molecules. An extremely rare, found in Congo before in the small crystals. Okay. And this should be or the largest or one of the largest. Fantastic. Well, place it on the matrix too. So yeah, really. For people liking rare, rare minerals, yeah, they will it. love it. Finally, let me show you another one from that mine, the Besignite. It's in this large okay. azurite. So the replacements of azurite malachite are typical from this mine. This is common, mm -hmm. but on this piece you can see the olive oh, green. Oh, okay, small that's crystals. it. Okay, right through there, and then here. That's that's very, very rich right there. And it is the besignite, another oh rare goodness. mineral. I can't even say it. <laughs> <laughs> it's named by the Coronel Besigné in France, who oh, donated oh, the collection so to the School of Mines of France. I see. Okay. So how does this compare with other of okay, that mineral? The Besignites yeah. from that mine, as far as I know, are not the world's best, but yeah. they are not so far. The world's best are from Congo, okay. at least by my experience. But okay. maybe some other piece better than this. Yeah. And it can compare well with the other ones from Congo. Very good. Yeah. Congratulations. Nice Keep to meet you. Good work. Thanks. I hope to see you next year. Oh, yeah.
Adam. Have a good, day. Right. good to see you again. Good to see you again. I always enjoy coming to this room. It's on fire with gorgeous crocoites, and I see pieces here I cannot believe what I'm seeing. Thank you. Wow. This particular piece was a very large specimen that I was very scared of. Oh, and so okay. it took me a while to get the courage to actually clean it. Mm -hmm. And these particular pieces actually came off a much larger specimen. Okay. Um, I know you wanted to go to the other piece first, but it's actually tied into a very big specimen that we've had a customer just trade up on. We I offer a see. policy where if a person takes a good specimen and then in the future sees one that they like more, that's worth more, then we'll take back the old specimen at the price they paid against the new one. And very that's good. We, that's very nice. Yeah. yeah. That's where we've now yeah, got upgraded and they just pay the difference. A lot of people yeah. don't want to have 10, 20 pieces in their collection. Yeah. So they just want to have the one good one. Sure. So we don't want them to be stuck with one that they have another that they prefer to have. Yes. But, which means we've actually got a very nice 2010 pocket specimen out the back that you might want to have a look at. So oh, I'll just really? go and grab that for you. Okay, sure. Wow, look at this. The size of these crystals. The 2010 pocket had some very big crystals wow. in it. This one was up there. It was a, a, about the same length as the, the biggest, but it was the widest crystal that we had in the pocket. Okay. And it was very, very solid. Extraordinary. Still slightly hollow, but very, yes. very thick skin. And it's There's, all complete. Doesn't look like it's broken. It's no, just the way it, it, yeah. it ended up growing. Yep. You have the little white dots right at the termination. Yeah. So. I wouldn't actually be surprised if it had broken in the pocket, but then it's rehealed and started yes. growing again. Yes. So you've got sort of that a very sense. fibrous little points over yes. the top of it. It's fab. But a lot of this pocket had that happen, where they just got so big and heavy they fell down. Yes. And then more juices come through later. Yes. And grown onto the ends of where it was broken. Exactly. And naturally rehealing them. Yes. Here's the piece that the Holy customer is trading up to. Oh, look at this. Wow. Oh, that is fantastic. So he traded up that one and he's getting this. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yes, indeed. God, fantastic. He's gone from the very big crystal yes. to the very big specimen. Yeah, <laughs> that is incredible. I mean, I have to be honest with you, these are the best overall I've seen. You get better every year. It's amazing. Well, congratulations. You've done a superb job. We really appreciate it. Wait. Hi, Dave. How are you doing now? Doing very well. you got a beautiful room here well, set up. I so see much. some very exciting minerals. And, uh, okay. Well, and give us a little uh, information that you can feed back on that. Well, so this, this piece came out fairly recently out of the newer, the oh, newer okay. stuff that's coming now, out. Now, what's from, recently, would you say? Uh, I want to say within a, uh, maybe months, but I, I'm not 100% certain on okay. that, actually. But um, it's beautiful. I, I love it. It's I, just I perfect, too. It. Um, it's a piece that was in my personal collection, but I'm uh, okay. I'm trying to move it. Yeah. Well, that's what we all do someday. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's great. This guy. That's fine. It's a citrine. It's smoky. a citrine with yeah. smoky phantoms, that's and you even right. you have a magic marker phantom down here, and then you yes. even have have some other nice phantoms in the tip. Yeah. But what can really you pick up that? Uh, Phantom, okay, uh, Brian. Yeah, I want you to rotate a little. I'm getting a reflection oh, okay. off the light off the face. Okay. There we go. Okay. okay. And what what you'll notice about it is, is that is it is optical quality. It really is. Now this find was um, hit in 1990, I believe. Okay. And most of the crystals are about yay big. This I is, see. This is, as far as I'm aware, the most significant piece from the find. Well, it's beautiful, because you know phantoms in the quartz are so appreciated anyway, let alone a smoky citrine mm -hmm. color to it. Yeah, oh, and it's Russian. Wonderful. Oh, it's a Russian. It's a Russian. Okay, I'm glad you mentioned that. Missouri. This is a twin, Chapel, Missouri. and they, it uh, is out of the, a find from the early 1900s, and you'll see big examples of these in the Smithsonian oh, and the American okay. Museum of Natural History. Um, Beautiful twinning with a kind of a pinkish violet color mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, this is a lovely crystal. And that's from Missouri. Mm -hmm. a Webb City? Webb City. Where is it in relation to Joplin and all it's that? It's in area? Jasper County, but the, I don't know yeah. exactly the geography of Missouri yeah. Yeah. Okay. real well. Okay. But it's I part was, of the tri-state system. I'm sure. There. And uh, there's <coughs> so many wonderful things like calcite, galenus, mm -hmm. phalarites, ruby jacks, phalarite. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a gorgeous thing. I love this uh, shoral 
uh, mm -hmm. a, a, a tourmaline on the microcline like that. That's a beautiful thing. This is a new find from 2014 okay. from Irongo, and it, oh. it easily produced the finest shorals that have ever been produced wow. from the region. Um, if you'll that? notice, the crystals are short and stout, and they yes. almost look like garnets. They're yeah. all double terminated. Yeah. The luster is extraordinarily high, yeah. and the contrast against the white feldspar is just striking. Uh, that caught my eye. That one came out of the Huanggong mine maybe four or five years ago. Okay. And to date, it's one of the finest large twins I've seen. It's wonderful. Um, this is an ex Charlie Key piece. Oh, okay. And it's uh, one pocket that produced this material. Um, citrine stem with a smoky cap, and it's included with tourmalines. It's beautiful. And, uh, I love that rock. Oh, it's just beautiful. <laughs> and it caught my eye when I walked in here. Dave, congratulations. Thank Keep you up so much. John? Hey Dave, how are you doing? It's nice Good. to see you again. Right on. Great. Appreciate that, your coming by. Another Tucson, huh? Unbelievable how fast the year is. It's our eighth year now. Oh yeah, yeah I get older, fantastic. you keep on getting better looking, and here we are doing another show together, <laughs> huh? This is a huge danbrite. You know what, from a deposit, the Aurora mine in Mexico that has produced an awful lot of danbrite over the years, please. This is certainly one of the larger exceptional crystals, and it's certainly not one of the things that we're seeing in ordinary stocks offered by the dealers these days. Okay, let me, I want to hide this part here. Okay, it's got this a, is wonderful. It's got a beautiful little druzy coating on yes. over it, and yet it's, it's got that casing removed from it up near the termination. It shows the gemminess of exactly. the crystal underneath. The, exactly. It, it, the morphology of the crystal. It's beautiful right. to have these opportunities yeah. to see these types of rare, exquisite, large right. mineral specimens. Now, the druze is a quartz? Yes, it is. Yeah, yes, quartz. sir. Yeah. Okay. No, this is wonderful. This is one of the new quartzes that are coming out of Inner Mongolia from the mines okay. on over there. Yeah. So this is a piece that has been introduced to the market here within just the last couple of years. Okay. And we're seeing these exceptional, we've seen quartzes of this style before. The Romanian quartzes are very similar to this with the milky appearance. Yes. Even some of the Colorado pieces are very similar to this, but to have this wonderful green hue. Yeah, it's actually... And a it's very green. aesthetic, the, the, the grouping of the crystals. That's what I like about it. Little Perfect bit of a, specimen. Little bit what of is the stalarite or what uh, is that down here? Hematite there? down here. Oh, it's hematite. I believe okay. so, yes, sir. Yeah. No, oh, that's beautiful. And the inclusion is Hedenbergite that's in, oh, in the crystal. That's okay. what the coloring is okay. for the crystals. Very good. I've got a couple of things that I was hoping I might be able to show you from the back here. Fine. If I could bring okay. those out and forward for you. Yeah, do that. Uh, this is material that was recovered over the last month, just prior to wow, coming here. Okay. And uh, we got real lucky. We uh, opened up four small pockets that yielded tourmaline. Uh, we opened up a number of other ones, but they were dry of the tourmaline, yes. sadly. Uh, but we really get some nice things. Yeah, this is one of the, the larger crystals here. Yeah. And we get double the, terminated. We get the yeah. beautiful color zoning that goes on through beautiful. the crystals. We've got a basal termination right. here on this end, mm -hmm. and then a complex termination on this yes. end, also red. Yeah. Uh, this is a cookite coating that's yes. on here, and basically when I discovered these crystals underground, I just wiped them against my pant leg. <laughs> so the, these are honest to goodness fresh treasures that's that have just come on out of the mine. Yeah, that's great. I'm what I'm about to show you now are two of the finest scepters that have come from our North American continent and from our, one of our finest localities, the Peterson Mountain locality. And where is that? This is in Nevada, just right out of Reno. Oh, and okay, so it's called, oh, oh the, you're giving the mountain. Peterson Mountain, yes, It sir. has another name. Hallelujah Junction yeah. is a very common yeah, name for it. That's right. That's the I'm one working I'm on it. Jan Johnson's claim, and oh. Jan has allowed me to come on up and dig some crystals. And I've got one here that I dug myself and then one that Jan dug that I'd like to share with you. I think they're some of the most exquisite quartzes that have ever come off the hill. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, this is oh, a beautiful little matrix Whoa, citrine scepter Whoa, with a wonderful, wonderful phantom deep within the crystal. Exactly. The citrine heads are some of the finest quality of the quartz that comes off the hill. They're always so limpid and yes. wonderfully clear. Yes. And then to have that perfectly centered scepter phantom oh, within fantastic. it. just 
made it a wonderful it's addition. It's a jewel. And you found this. You yes, You dug sir. that out. Good yep. for you. It was the only crystal that came out of a three-foot-long pocket where everything was destroyed and sharded. It was the only crystal that remained intact. And what a wonderful thing it Beautiful. is. Beautiful. Congratulations. Thank and you. This one and then, here, then this one, oh my gosh, this is one of the finest wow. amethyst scepters that has ever come off the claim. It's it, from the same claim? Yes, it is. Wow. Yes, it is. Okay. And the, the wonderful formation, the yeah. thin shaft, the big head, oh, the hanging God. skirts that come exactly. down off the yeah, bottom. Look at that. This is an unrepaired specimen. Wow. You get to see the beautiful color zoning that goes on with the amethyst towards the top, the milky zone that goes through the centers of the crystals, and then the bottom being having that beautiful smoky, very reminiscent of a lot of the quartz that comes off the hill. So while these quartzes are typical, they're completely atypical in regards to their quality. They're some of the finest quartzes we've seen. It's fantastic. And then when was this found in relation to that one? Oh, these are both pieces that have been recovered in just the last couple of years. Okay. Yep. Yep, Fantastic. we've been very fortunate as continual mining is going on up it's on the claim amazing. during the spring and summer amazing. months. Okay. Recovering some of the finest materials that are known yeah, from our continent. That, just like that. Look at yeah. that thing. This is from Mont Blanc, yeah. Yeah. and this is one of the French Gwindles, and it shows that beautiful, limpid nature of That's the quartz. That's what caught my oh, eye. It's There's, just an absolute You see gem. these, they're not common, but they do come out and everything, and what it amounts to is that this, this crystal is so jammy at top, and it, it, absolutely beautiful, though, it, clean. Everything yes, about this is clean. This is hard to get, and this size and the combination of the perfection of this Gwen. I would yeah. agree, and Killer. look at the thickness. I mean, yeah. it's such a bold, yeah. it's, it's just a wonderful piece. Yeah, that caught my eye immediately when I saw it. Oh, man, that thing is clean. The twisted yeah. twins, so the many of them, twins are yeah, they, exceptional. Yeah, they really are, but some, most of them, I should say, have always some things in it, what have you, but this, this, this is just a wonderful hand-sized specimen. Yeah. Congratulations. Dave. You did it again. Hey, thank you Good very you. much. It's Thanks an absolute pleasure. Appreciate working with you as yeah. usual. Thank, thank you very much, everybody. Hi, Dave. Hi, How doing? are you? I'm doing fine. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. This is an Amazonite cluster. The neat thing about this piece is that uh, actually all the pieces I'm going to be showing you today came from the Icon Pocket. Okay. This pocket was found in 2012, and it is the largest pocket that we've ever found in our history. Oh, okay. Yes. So it's uh, actually eight feet by six feet. Wow. Right. Fantastic. The, the size of these Amazonite are what make them so amazing. Yes. Because it's very difficult to maintain color with the size. Usually, that is correct. when they get bigger, they, yeah, they lose a lot of it. it. Yeah. Right, so this is why we're so excited about this pocket. Very good. This is probably That's wonderful. one of Look the most... That. Oh, that is fantastic. Look how aesthetic just, this is. It looks like you just literally made the piece and put it all together. If that isn't wonderful. This is a probably, I'd say, an iconic piece in the sense that that yeah. smoky is right in the middle. Right in the, that's, that's what, uh, it's unbelievable. As I say, it looks like you made it up. No, 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 it's all fitting just perfect. Yeah, you got it together there. It's an absolutely incredible piece and very, wow. very happy to see this one. Now, this pocket that Tim has been working on has taken him two years wow. to do the prep work on. So oh. because of the size of the crystals, yes. it has actually taken him twice as long to get these pieces oh, done. Interesting. Okay. The surface area. So this area. has been going on for a couple of years then when the pack was discovered. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Discovered in 2012 and finally released in 2015. Okay. So it's been a long process, but wow. it's turn turned out yeah. beautifully. And so, Dave, I have a very beautiful specimen to show you. We call this the Icon, and it is probably one of the most impressive pieces that has come out of this pocket. Wow. So Tim actually needs to come and help me with it because it's quite heavy. Okay. Wow. Look at this. You got it? Oh, that is unbelievable. 
never in the history of Amazon coming out of the state of Colorado regardless or anywhere in the world have I ever seen anything like that. Not only the beauty of it, but the size of the crystals in combination. That is unbelievable. It is. It's, it's one of the largest groups ever found. Very good. Yeah. Very um, good. Never seen anything like that anywhere in the world, even close. So we oh. find oddities up at our claims, which okay. are a lot of fun. Okay. And this one a little cutie. This oh, is a garotite cast yeah. that formed over a cassiterite. Oh, for Pete's Or a carbonate. Yeah, and a little smokies in the middle. This, okay, it would go like that. Then you have a window here, like, and then you turn it this way, and you got a smoky. Isn't that cute? You planted cute? that in I there. I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I told nature it's, what to do. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That is wonderful. I have one more piece that I'd like you to take a look at. This is okay. kind of a secret piece. I can't believe it. Yes. and it, Is it Amazonite? It is. Okay. But it's a very special Amazonite, okay. and I'm going to have Tim explain that to you. Okay. Very so good. you'll be very impressed. <laughs> okay, Tim. Let's see what you got there. Look at that. It's on Matrix. <laughs> That's the impressive oh, I can't part. believe Oh my God, it's like a miracle. <laughs> wow. Isn't it you beautiful? You know, I've seen these Pavino, the twins in the white uh, feldspar, you know, but mm -hmm. an Amazonite like that, that is really a one of a kind with a large, I can't believe this thing. And the color too, well, I mean. The intensity of color. Right. Little re twin on the other side up near the termination. Oh yeah, they are. look at that. Yeah, look, they can try to zero in on that, uh, Brian, right in there. Oh, this. what a treat. Yeah, so the Icon Pocket produced this, uh -huh. and uh, when we first discovered this thing, we immediately thought it was going to be broken in, you know, 40 different pieces. Sure, sure. And uh, believe it or not, there's only one little repair on this entire bovino way at the way down at the bottom. Exactly. Of it. So the whole thing was intact. Um, it's just unbelievable. The only other repair work would be uh, the Matrix itself. I mean, the, these great pieces you're getting now, what I like to see done is some program where it gets on the national news. Which, I mean, this is a major, major discovery. I mean, I've seen the termlings, I've seen this, but this stuff has gotten so much better, this Amazon, uh, with the, especially with the smoky all by, and then this crystal. My God, I've never seen anything like that. Thank Thanks you so much, Dave. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Great seeing you. Yeah. Hey, Dave. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Pleasure getting together with you here for yeah. 2015. And I was in this room, and you got some gorgeous Chinese minerals here yeah. you brought with you. Thank you. And this caught my eye immediately when the door was open and, mm -hmm. and uh, the size of this quartz. And it reminds me of a giant porcupine. <laughs> yeah, that it's a fabulous like that thing. Way, huh? But it's really a museum piece. And I, 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 we have to get this on our program. This quartz is a uh come from Guangdong province, that Jinlong, very famous uh, locality for uh, quartz. And this uh, locality also um, find like about 15 years ago, oh, there okay. were similar red quartz, but it was uh, clear. So the hematite inclusion is inside the quartz. And um, uh, the pocket, this pocket was found last year. Uh, total was about three tons of material, okay. but like 99% are black quartz. And a few pieces are red or yellow. So uh, this particular piece, it's a, I, I trim all from a huge, a big piece. Oh, okay. Then I trim into this way, then I clean up. It came out really nice, um, uh, red and a good luster. Uh, this is actually a mangano it's yeah. a, um, okay. So it's a from uh, Da Ye. Came out about not exactly uh, sure, probably like seven to nine years ago. It's just okay. a one pocket. And um, the ones like um, not damaged, uh, you know, collectible, it's oh, a yeah. total only nine pieces. And so within these nine pieces, the seven pieces are on matrix, and the two pieces are single crystals. Wow. Uh, this one, the crystal size is the largest one in that nine pieces. Beautiful. So this one, it's a twinning here? Yes, it is. 
And this is so gentle. So this is Mangan Oak. Mangan Oak. Did they ever find some? Well, I guess other localities. They, they called them Caboldi and Kelsa. If it was like the Mexican came, ones, huh? Th that's what yeah. it is. But this is. Uh, uh, Ah, it's a gorgeous thing. Mm. It, it's kind of a pink purple. Right. Yeah, Under the purple. different light, it yeah. changes a little bit. Yeah. Mangano calcite. Mm -hmm. And I hear you have a major cinnabar. Yes, show yes, yeah. it's a very unusual cinnabar. Let it, me uh, yeah. take it out, from, out. The, yeah. from the drawer. Okay. So there's a... I'll hold the box. Thank you. Yeah. This is the only piece I see, uh, I have seen like in two habits together. Yes, exactly. And um, at the beginning, I did not really um, sure if it's a cinnabar or other mercury uh, minerals. Okay. So I uh, took a little bit piece yes. uh, to have the uh, University of Arizona okay. uh, to be tested. Yes. It's been confirmed as both crystals are cinnabars. Yeah. So you, as you can see, Very the, the, the clearance and the loss, they That's all. Right. And uh, uh, together mm -hmm. with um, um, the quartz lost crystal. quartz, yes. and also it's a, in fact it's a floater. Yes. So like you say, I, I totally believe this is um, the finest uh, miniature of yeah, cinnabar never, never seen ever found. Like yeah. That. Oh, it's, yeah. a, it's a helvite. So it's a helvite. Right. But what, what is the ball? What, what is the ball? This is a helvite. It is a helvite. This it is a it calcite. almost looked like the same. Right. This is a calcite. Though. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And no, it's a, a floater. It. It's a floater. It is a floater. Right. It's a not a nowhere. It's broken. So. Yeah. Not a. Yeah. yeah it's mm -hmm. fully euhedral. Right. Charlie, thank you. Nice. Beautiful pieces you have here. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much yeah. for your nice comments. Look forward nice to seeing comment. these wonderful minerals. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank it's you very much. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time. Another year. Good to see you. Yeah, another one. How many times have you been to Tucson? Oh, how many times since uh, 63? Holy smokes, yeah. 63. Yeah. So fast math, that's 40 to 2003. Hmm. And then another 10, that's 53. I don't know if I can count this high, Dave. 54 day. years. 54 yeah. years, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. This is my 20th year. 20th year? 20th year. You believe that? That's Follow beautiful. me up to the... Oh, really something. Yeah. What was that, 19 cases? 19 Holy showcases. Cow. I don't even know. If you got to imagine there's 50 <laughs> specimens per case. So yeah. you're looking at somewhere almost 1,000 specimens yeah. on display. You think of it. As we go this way, we enter and we're passing through Lawrence Stoller's gallery oh, yeah. straight ahead. He has beautiful things. Yeah, Look at that's this wonderful. Thing. Holy cow. That's Look called at NASA. This. My God, it's almost like a, that is unbelievable. Yeah. It's, it's like a tornado coming down or something or yeah. a volcanic thing. What is all the... Uh, it's that, chloride. It's chloride. A chloride, oh, yeah. okay. Follow me this way into our first gallery. Okay. So in here we have a couple of new things going on. I always like to do something new in this gallery room. Yes. This year I have, this is a new specimen that we Beautiful. got. This is... The finest cathedral quartz I've ever seen in my life. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely, absolutely great. It's all complete. Perfect. Look at that thing. It's actually, this must have broken out of the, the matrix where it grew, and all of this is recrystallized. Re Rehealed. Yeah. Rehealed. Yeah. It's all complete on the back, and it doesn't have one nick. I mean, for a 70-pound quartz, that's fabulous. That's fabulous. 70 pounds. And you know, then in this case right next to it, you know, I haven't done theme cases in quite some time, yeah. and I'm probably going to want to shut the lights again, but... As you can see, these are all glowing a little orange. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That. These are these were a new find of gypsum and halite oh. that came from Germany, uh -huh. and they're from a road cut. Stand back oh, a little so cut. I can open the door. Well, the there door. was a salt mine okay. that had been worked in the 1800s in Germany, and they, when they do these salt mines, they, they're enormous tunneling underground, they're enormous mines. Yeah. And to then towns get built above them. And to preserve the towns and the infrastructure of the earth in those areas, they take industrial ash and they go back and they backfill them. And so they were in the process of backfilling this particular mine and they came to an area where there was a road between two tunnels. And so they never mined out 
the area that was under this road between two tunnels. Oh. But the fastest way to get the ash in to, to shore up this, these empty cavities was to just sort of mine under the road and then put it in. Because with today's technology, yeah. sure enough, they mine through and they hit this See giant that? pocket right under the road. Okay. What makes them super cool, and I'll see if I can do this, is you have... Look at that. You have this crazy fluorescence on the halite, yes. but the gypsums have a fl fluorescent phantom oh. going through them. That's that pale, oh yeah, pale like y lemon yellow or even mm. almost a white. And then when you take it out, they phosphoresce. Oh, they phosphoresce. Yeah, okay. but just the gypsum phosphoresce. Yeah, right. If you look at here, yeah. yeah, just the gypsum. Well, I'm still in the light. It's hard to do. I got to do it where I'm. Yeah, right there. Yeah, and it's you can still going. So what, what happened was collectors were, they were blown away with this case, but the only, the only downfall of the jewel box mm -hmm. is that collectors sometimes are limited for space in their homes. Yes. And so a showcase like this pretty much becomes really crowded looking if you start going over about 20, 20 specimens. 25 is really the max, and that's if you collect some small cabs and some maybe some miniatures. Mm -hmm. But if you collect cabinet to small cabinet to large cabinet and you have a general mix, mm -hmm. this case is good for between 15 and 20 objects. Okay. That's not a lot of objects for some collectors. That some collectors correct. have 200 oh, sure. specimens that yeah. they want to display in yeah. on one small wall. And right. so the next idea was to, okay, let's make a showcase that's similar to what the... Um, the fiber optic cases that have been traditionally available, but with the lighting technology of the jewel box and the Very same good. style. And so yeah. this is the first generation of these. Very good. And we have Beautiful. them here in Tucson. There's lots of cool benefits about them. Oh. Um, I'll talk about them, I guess. Makes sense. So collectors can know. Right. Um, they have the same patented system for the lighting where you can just See pull. That. It plugs in on the audio jack. It bends 90 degrees and it can you rotate 360. That. So you can place that light in any one of these holes. Yes. And light up the mineral. Yeah, zero right in. There are one of the new designs, I'm sorry. One of the new designs is the louver system, which I'll il illustrate right here. Instead of the first generations, they had plugs that you had to plug into each one of the okay. empty sockets. Yeah. So instead we just did a little louver system where you just push it in and I'll illustrate it with a light. You'll get a better idea. You push it in, it opens the little door, and you just push it in straight, oh, and there you go. And you can light up wherever that. you want. You see that? So That's a wonderful idea. It's a dynamic display. It yes. allows you to collect miniatures and light them all perfectly with tons of light, or yes. you could collect five big minerals and yeah. just put in the five lights you need. And there Absolutely. are over 250 different light positions wow. that you can select from. Okay. In this one case. In this one case. Fantastic. Another innovation that we've done is that you're looking at only 3,000 and 5,000 color temperature, but now we offer five color temperatures. So we have 2,700 Kelvin, we have 3,200 Kelvin, 4,100 Kelvin, we have uh, 5,000 Kelvin and 6,500 Kelvin. So you have five different color options to make oh. your minerals and really dial them in yeah. to specifically what that mineral needs to look yes. its best. Exactly. So if you have a rhodochrosite here yeah. and you want it to look amazing, you use the 2,700 Kelvin and the red just goes crazy. Right. If you want to hit this blue tourmaline, you're going to put on you know, a 6,500 Kelvin and it's just going to be the deepest, most brilliant blue that you can get. That's fantastic. And so the ability to have that a, the ability to move the lights mm -hmm. and then to change the color temperature mm -hmm. all within seconds is, is unprecedented. Fantastic. Furthermore, the interior can be swapped out in just a few easy steps and you can make it all white. Wow. And then one of the other neat items is, there's a little bit more to go on the cases. I'm sure. going to keep going. Sure. Um, there's a metal bar cut and embedded into the back of the shelf okay. on the top and the bottom, two little metal rods. Yes. And they go into this channel back here, mm -hmm. which is a power channel. And so essentially what I can do is this bar, this glass shelf is electrified. Oh. 
So I can take a little clip that I have, clip it onto the back of the shell, yeah. the wire comes up, and I can illuminate using, it's very much like we have over here, you can illuminate oh, a mineral. Yeah, I see that back there, yeah. Yeah, you can see oh, it has okay. the, the little goosenecks from, from the back. Fantastic. So you can do that now on those sh shelves. Oh, that's you can fantastic. See. So you can, those, those cases are incredibly versatile. Oh, it's wonderful. That works wonderful. really well. Yeah. Congratulations. Right. I think that's great. Now, before we head into the vault, yeah. um, I'd like to show you something new I've been working okay. on. Okay. You want to see something else? Yeah, sure. Follow me. Yep. We're going to go back this way. Now, this is something we've been, a vision, something we've been working on for the better part of Oh, I don't know, about a year and a half, and okay. I'm going to take you to see something that you're going to be surprised with. I, I hope you're not, are you, are you feeling warm? I'm fine. You're fine. All right, oh, yeah. good deal. Yeah, well, we're going. So here we are, Dave. <laughs> New York City. I was telling you, come on. We're going to go right over here. a surprise Isn't this crazy? Isn't this amazing? Yeah, this is really something. not what you expected. <laughs> Never expected anything no? like this on Madison Avenue. On Madison Avenue. Well, you, you really pulled out a first. Thank you. Hello, Darwin. Right, how you doing, Hello. Dave Wilbur? Right. How are you? This. Oh my goodness, this is really something. So welcome. Oh, this is this Mardani. Is this is our vision. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Isn't this something. The vision of the store was to try and share with the with the world in a way minerals the way you and I appreciate them. You know, you and I see something like the rabbit ears tourmaline and we recognize it to be one of, you know, the premier minerals in the mineral kingdom and it in in our minds it's on par with the finest objects of art in the world. Right. But at the same time the, the rest of the world doesn't know what that specimen is. Yeah, they have correct. no concept of it. That's right. So we are here trying to educate and share with people so that they can see what it is that you and I are so accustomed to in our daily lives, this new world of, of mineral collecting for them. And it's, it's every day we have people coming in and they're just flabbergasted and yeah. shocked of seeing what they see. This is one of the big ones look. all in perfect condition. I mean, that is really a rarity to get the large ones with such quality to them, just like the finer, smaller. Well, you have a couple big ones in here too as well. But everything you have is of such high quality. Exactly. That's that's the that's the the common thread between all the minerals is that the minerals are not uh, just here because they're big. Every specimen is hand-picked. Every specimen is the right quality. Every specimen is is special. We're not we're not just going to Brazil buying yeah. a, you know a container load of amethyst geodes exactly. and putting them on display and yeah. and calling it a day. Let me show you a bit yeah. more around the store. Sure. So we have showcases yeah. that are highlighting you know incredible, beautiful mineral specimens, the type that you and I love. And so what, what we have to do is first educate people. And yes. so a lot of it is, you know, we bring them in, they see the minerals on the pedestals, they see the showcases, yeah. and then we bring them here. And this is sort of, this is sort of a, a minerals in your space gallery, yeah. so to speak. It's, it's fine minerals amongst you in decor, and it's the bridge to collections because they make that transition from understanding this as a decorative object in their space to mm -hmm. this as a collectible object. That is correct. And when they make that transition and they buy one of those, yeah. then they come full circle and they come around and they say, well, what if I have several of those? What's mm -hmm. my next step? And yeah. that's sort of this bookcase idea over here. And this is where you can see different objects in different levels. We have minerals. Oh, yeah. We yeah. have a, a, a meteorite slice. Yeah, so exactly. this sort of gives a person the ability to see how what they might do with minerals in a way that is different than just one object at the end of a hallway. That's right. They could have a group of them. Yes. Or they could have them in a bookcase with books. And then the next transition is to, well, I want to collect these. I want to have a showcase filled with beautiful objects. That's and so right. 
this is really, yeah. you know, where I'm driving people is to, to build collections and That's to understand right. and appreciate these things the way I do. Dave, thanks for coming to see Mardani. Well, thank you. I'm glad you, did you like it? Oh, it's fabulous. Great. <laughs> Absolutely What do you wonderful. say we get back to Tucson? Yeah, let's Go look at that. those things yeah, we have in the vault. Got. Yeah, exactly. Well, welcome back to Tucson. <laughs> get that cold out of our bones. And we're walking back to go see the vaults. This right. is the, the best part. Yeah. I'll do it like this. There we go. I'm going to show you some beautiful things. Okay. Let's see what we have this year, Dave. Mm, I love this part. All right, this is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that is? Should throw yeah. you a little. Phenakite? No. Amberite? No. Discalcite? No. Burl? Mm -mm. No, no Goshenite? No. Nope. I really don't know what this thing is. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah, it's fabulous. It is gypsum. Oh, gypsum, okay. From Abu Dhabi. I don't Dhabi. want to scratch. Oh, okay. Gypsum. Well, how Mined about that? in Abu Dhabi. If you, I don't totally know if you can different. see it, but right in here, there's a phantom of little bubbles. Oh, okay. That was where the typical, okay. like, sharp crystals of gypsum were. And oh, then there was okay. this second generation of growth oh, okay. to these strange, they're like hexagonal barrels of, of gypsum. I've never seen it before from any other locality. Has anybody else uh, figured out? Did, did you show anybody else? And here it is. What is it? Like with me? No, you're Nobody. the first person I did it with. Okay. So I don't know how everybody else is going to fa uh, fare on that test, yeah. but um, well, I'm, yeah, I'm sure they're all going to look at it and just go, what? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. What is this? It stunned me. If I had it a little longer, I might have caught it. You might have caught the this, little cleavage the, there. Yeah, the, little, little, yeah. the, the little cleavage Line plane internally. Right, yeah. Well, that's fabulous. Isn't that wonderful? For yeah. Abu Dhabi, I mean, ah, it's a unique Abu locality. Dhabi. Yeah, you never hear this is from Abu Dhabi. Yeah, yeah there, there are no minerals yeah. from there. And, and this is really cool. This is a dodecahedron of uh, fluorite, fluorite mm -hmm. from a mine called Dong Po. Okay. The wonderful thing. Put this like that. Yeah, there we go. And you can see it with the oh, white yeah, background. It's a beautiful piece. It's just wonderful, the aesthetics of it. Yeah. Sitting up like that with the oh, green, with the light purple. Razor sharp. That's wonderful, and they're all complete, too. Yeah. And that's Druzy Quartz, I assume. Yep. yep. So this is a scepter oh, look at that. from Madagascar. Isn't that great? It looks like it was made last night. Yeah. Isn't that a gorgeous thing? That's wonderful. It's so perfect. Yeah. Ah. The balance of it is just absolutely and this wonderful. this is uh, Hallelujah? Madagascar. Oh, oh Madagascar? Mm -hmm. How Madagascar. tall is that? Okay. Because I've seen similar things from, you know, Nevada mm -hmm. there. Sure. This is oh, color. This is the Hilton mine. It's Hilton a twin. Yes. So it's English and it's from oh. probably it's twin. not prehistoric, Beautiful. but it's darn close. Beautiful. It's just yeah, a killer England, penetration England twin. England did produce fabulous fluorites, and this is one of them. Not only a beautiful twinning, but the color, sharpness, perfect. Yeah. Perfect specimen. That yellow, yeah, it's rich gorgeous. yellow is yeah. great. This for fluorite collectors is like the coup oh, d'etat. Yeah. They're yeah. coveted localities. You see that? The Hilton Mine. The twins. Hilton Mine. This is a really wild thing. You're going to look at it. I got to get say, my glasses as an epidote. Epidote, exactly. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. From Pakistan. That. That's the weird thing. That's Pakistan. Perhaps I've seen garnets. some little ones. Yeah. And I see this big one. I said, I think it's a, a, an epidote. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when, I, when you pulled it out, that's Very a reminiscent killer. of the Italian localities. Yes. You know, the old uh, Bellacombe and Val yes. de Vue. And even associated with garnets. So it's interesting deposits. Beautiful. So similar. Very much so. This yeah. is classic. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Illinois. Thing. Yeah, but look at that. That thing. Tense is just, colors. That is outrageous. Fabulous now. Thing. A little bit of violet down here and the We're beautiful the golden color. I like to look at that. Look at that. A, a, a true golden color like yeah. that when you back that up. Isn't that a gorgeous thing? In Ross's collection, in oh, the Lily collection, there okay. were 
maybe four of these okay. and you know that are this level of quality sharpness perfection oh, that's that's, a, that's an outrageous oh, mineral and you oh. know they they hit a new pocket at mcgurl oh okay this year james egress did and we got this example from him this that's, is from the new pocket this is from the oh, new pocket God. okay i've got two that i'm going to share with you okay and this is the that by wonderful. far the finest oh, crystal in my opinion that i saw produce i love this step oh yeah yeah look at that Look at that! Isn't and the that wonderful? Is just, it's the McEarl Ridge mine. It's yeah, that's next what they're called. Next door, a hundred feet to from it. Hundred feet to show, yeah. right over the, the border. Exactly. But it's beautiful material. Oh, it's a gorgeous thing. It looks like it was machine. Yeah, made. that's why I say these quartz is really are something. And you know, it's funny. You look at all quartz from around the world, and you mm -hmm. say, "Hey." This is a beautiful quartz. The quality is unsurpassable. And then yeah. you put a McEarl next to oh, it, and you yeah, go, "Wait a minute!" It. Yeah. This is amazing. Ooh, that's beautiful. So now, English now. This is English, yeah. but it's Heights Mine, which is not Roger Lee. Oh, okay. The difference is, if you can notice it here, and I like it like that. It's a heart. <laughs> it's like a heart. <laughs> Look at that. Is that Look it doesn't that. Look have that coloring. It doesn't have the bluish component, not nearly uh, as much. Yeah. It has much more of that emerald the green. Green, green color. is fabulous. The green is phenomenal. Oh, it's wonderful. The green is just vibrant, yeah. electric Twinning green. and everything, really. Huge crystals here. These are huge crystals for the crystallized coppers from Michigan. And then you have it all branching off into the... That's a wonderful thing, though. Isn't that great? That's great. Fully crystallized on both oh, sides. Yeah. yeah, look at that. Old Ed David piece. Oh. This thing is a wonderful thing, this next thing. This is just crazy. I've had a few of these, not many, but mm -hmm. one or two. Mm -hmm. But this one takes the cake. This is just crazy. Oh, look at that. Isn't that That's fabulous? Just fabulous. It, it looks like somebody sculptured that. If they had a nature course. Totally look at that. perfect. It's just perfect. Floating. Holy cow. Stalactites. And I, I'm sure it grew like this upside down. And it formed. And you can see the crystals yes. were coming through these tubes. Yeah. The, 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 the calcite is coming down and depositing. And then this is the water table. So yeah. right where it hits the water table, yes. it grows into these yeah, big, massive crystals. Yeah, you can see crystals. this. Just kind of a hay, that, just going across there. Right? Exactly. That table was. So Beautiful. This is just a wonderful thing. This is uh, one of those halites. Oh, okay. So that's a super fine one. It seemed like, I don't know, remember the matrix, though. So you got this on matrix, Silmanite, too. Silmanite, yeah. Silmanite. Look at that thing. Do it from the back. That we sure. Really show. There you go. Or I can hit it here, and you can hold it down. You can probably bounce the light. Not, no, 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 uh, yeah. just, just there. From Brian's aspect. Oh, Brian's seeing it. Can you see that light through it? Yeah. Okay. Don't know which is better. No, that was perfect. Which way, yeah, bouncing? Just like that. Yeah, the bounce is the best. Yeah. That's great. Beautiful. It's a hell of a fine one. It's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got those little yeah. white balls in between yes. at the base. So it gives it some contrast. That's yeah. right. That's what makes yeah, that so beautiful. wonderful. It's a great thing. And the locality, is it African? Yeah, Burgaukis. It, it is Burgaukis. It's very different. Yeah. Very different. Old, well, old piece. Lovely thing. Do you know this species? You might have seen one. Maybe not. I don't know Got this. That? That's, what is it? It's plumbo gummite. Oh, that's it's so different though. This one. See, this has these big balls. Yeah. All over. The other ones are just kind of in the blue. And it's all sparkly. Yeah. And you can oh, see yeah. it's got that wonderful. It's so much better than the ones I saw. Yeah. This is the best example I've seen for the species. Yeah, that's a hell of a And they're coating, those are pyromorphite I don't know the mineral. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I simply don't know the mineral, but I, that name is given out on. It's radioactive. Play. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> Take that home with me. This is one that I think we've done before, but I just love it. Ooh, look at that thing. Holy cow. Just Did we from do that? Mill Peelis. Yeah. Showing the two different generations. Yes. Just it's, so, it's so hard to remember. It, it, it's so gorgeous. Just a perfect, a small uh, <coughs> cabinet specimen. That's beautiful. It's a jewel. Jewel. I don't know if I handed this to you or if we filmed this, mm -hmm. but I yeah, think you diamond? know what that is. Diamond? That is a diamond. Oh, yeah. Mackle twin. It sure is. 35 carats of 
Thank you very much. I'll make, make my day. <laughs> is, that, is that good for you, Dave? Yeah. Look at that. I love Fair this. Fair compensation. Ah. 35 carats. Yeah. Yeah. This is new. So this is interesting because Holy cow, look it's at the from size a new mine. Mm -hmm. uh, started producing about two years ago. Wow. In Badakhshan, mm -hmm. which is in Afghanistan. Oh, yeah. And it's near Paprock. Yeah. Um, and this is by far the best example. That's fabulous. Isn't that wonderful? God, talking about a museum piece. No repairs, oh, no restorations, just an fabulous. outrageous example. Absolutely fabulous. Oh, you have to hand it to that locale. It's come up with great turbines. So here is something that's just totally unusual. Oh, isn't that nice? Look at that. Looks like a flower. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, they, they've really found wonderful from India. amethyst. Oh, from India. Yeah, okay. that's the finest Indian that? amethyst I've ever seen. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Similar mm -hmm. to a certain style that comes from Brazil, but much, much more deeply saturated. Yeah. Purple. It really is. Yeah. It has wonderful color. That's the finest example I've ever seen from that locality. Yes. I've seen small ones and little pieces, but this yes. is by far the example. Yeah. And this is awesome. I love this. Right you know, it's, oh, it's look at that. common minerals it's, doing something yeah. wonderful yeah. together. What it, what it amounts to is a common mineral. Each one of these are common. But you get it into a cluster like this, it's like a dream come true. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, look at that. That thing has such character and beauty. How many quartzes, shorals, oh. and albites have we seen, but how many look like that? Forget it. So for that's me, that's wonderful. even more important is oh, when you have much so. you know, a, a mineral that is prolifically produced around the world, yes. and then you have it at this level, this exactly. caliber, it transcends. That is a one of a kind. It makes it, it's even more rare than, you know, oh, yeah. some of the rare species. Oh, very much so. In that condition, obviously. It's in perfect condition, too. Yeah, it's incredible. This is great. Beautiful. Is that from the new uh, Sonoran? Nope. Where's that? Think from? older. Like a hundred years older. Oh, it's, oh, okay. Bisbee? Bisbee it is. Yeah. Wonderful. Isn't that great? Look at that. Love that from Bisbee. Yeah, that's a beautiful color. I like this, even though this is where it broke, but, uh, this was in a cavity, needless to say, but it adds to it. Yeah. I like that line around it. It's like a border. It makes it, it gives it a yeah. border and it makes yes. it pop. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. This is great for a stibnite. Not your typical, though. Oh, yeah, look at that. Looks like Romanian, but it's yeah. Chinese. Chinese, yeah. And it has these, it's the Beautiful. only one I've ever had with these elongated terminations. Yeah, they come pointed like that. They come that. pointed. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? And it's just got this incredible yeah, beautiful aesthetic. Beautiful burst. Yeah. It's a beautiful burst. Yeah. Beautiful. These were new out of China this past year. And this was the only one that I had gotten on Matrix. Oh, look at that. Sure is that. Oh, isn't that a beautiful, look, look at that thing. Isn't that gorgeous? The calcites and then the... It's barite. It's barite. It is Two barite. generations. Okay. And the first generation yeah, was barite. this sort of, you know... That's the best one of those I've seen. It's like a... Oh, it's fabulous. Uh, a champagne -y color, and then it goes yeah. to that bright white. Bright white. Yeah, I've seen some small pieces of it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's barite. This was the, the Pepsi Challenge. That other crystal oh, I showed you. Yes, look at that. This is McEarl from the previous find. Okay. So this was 1987. Cool? And it's a twin, a Daphne yeah, twin yep, and a yep. Brazil twin. That's both. right. Look at that. Isn't that what wonderful. A jewel. A total Just jewel. a jewel. And then this is worth having in your hand. I don't know if we picked this up in New York. <laughs> but look at that. You can pick it up again. Oh, Isn't that just wonderful? Wow, for a malachite. Look for a at malachite, that. Look, that's crazy. That is unbelievable. Get that damn thumb out of the way. It's just hard to believe this stuff forms in the ground like this. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. And the last two things I have to show you, I have right under this table. Okay. You know, I... I don't know how much you know about the species, but vanadinite has been coming out for a long time. And since 2002, I've had no less than five or six pockets um, 
it seems they hit a pocket once every few years of something major, and they vary. But the elusive and the always, you know, the most desirable have always been vanadinites on white barite. Yeah. And there was a, a pocket that was supposedly hit in the late, early 80s that Barry Ample purchased 90% of it, and it was handled by Stefan Stolte and Occam Carl. And they're two European dealers, and they together had that pocket. And apparently, there's some really fine pieces in there, but no one ever saw them. I see. And then, since then, in the 80s, I've never seen another find on white barite. About two months ago, they hit a pocket, and it was on the oh, blessed white barite. And I'm going to show you the two finest examples. And what I feel are the two finest oh, uh, vanadinites I've ever seen in my life. Wow, look at that. So, That's I mean, wonderful. It's, it's the red on white. Yeah, the red it's on white. Much harder to get by magnitudes of many times. Infinitely harder. Yeah. You just, you don't see yeah. it. Wonderful. I mean, these are rough. They just came out. There's a couple of little tiny broken crystals on the side here, but it's 99% intact. And this is, for me... Absolutely gorgeous. Never seen anything like that. This and the next one you're about to see are the two finest vanadinites nights I've ever seen. Ah, fabulous. They're just incredible things. This is arguably the best vanadinite night there is. Okay. Holy cow, look at that thing. Look at that. Isn't That's that unbelievable. crazy? Best thing I've ever seen in that mineral. Best thing I've ever seen in that mineral too. <laughs> unbelievable. The fact that this thing exists is, is crazy. Yeah. I'll give you my American Express and you can just Absolutely. I'll take well, it home you got tonight. It. Thank yep. you. You don't mind if I send an invoice by email? No that's problem. A, that's fine. That's fine. You got it. <laughs> killer. Absolutely a killer. So there we have it. Daniel, thanks there, a lot. Thanks so Wonderful much. Thanks job. for coming. Come Keep here, up the great work. Yeah, big hug. You keep up the great work. Thank you. Dave, how are you? Fine, how are Good you Good to see you again. You're in a new location now. Usually yes. you're down there. This is yes. really a nice Yes, Yes, Dave, uh, Dave opened a new building. Yeah. So I was lucky to have my uh, own room this year. Yeah, that's I'm happy. nice. Good. Yeah. Good for you. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Well, let's see what you have here. I know you do have some wonderful things to show us. So do you want to start uh, um, uh, over here? here? You have, okay. Yeah, I think there is something really interesting. Okay. It's some uh, some new rutile and uh, hematite from uh, mm -hmm. from Madagascar. Okay. Uh, okay. So you have the the matrix, which is the, the yeah. pseudomorphos, and oh, on it you okay. have a second generation of hematite okay. and rutile growing. These are rutile. Look at the yes. size, it's like a V twin type yeah. of thing. Yeah, that's wonderful. Boy, that is something new. And these came out when? Well, the the story is that the 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 the, the guy who is digging there found this pocket in 2012. Yeah. Okay. And um, asked me to to give them secret okay. for the last three years because he wanted to to still uh, to continue to dig there and to have uh, yes. to be quiet on the place. And exactly. uh, I have kept this uh, stuff for the last uh, three yeah. years. See, there's the rutile there and there's a hematite and the rutile in there. What a wonderful uh, miniature. Ah, that's great. Yeah, there were okay. some, uh, some really, yeah. really wonderful pieces. Good. In this case, this catches my eye right there. What is it, aragonite? Uh, yeah, it's aragonite and sphalerite. I have been traveling to, to Peru too okay. this year. And I beautiful. found this, uh, this very nice piece. Yeah, this is a beautiful, what an aesthetic specimen. That's gorgeous. And this just came out recently, would you say? I, got it, uh, I got it about uh, six months ago. Okay, well, that's recent. Yes. That's wonderful. Yes, yes. Fantastic. They're still finding some great minerals. That, that's a wonderful thing. I love that. Yeah, Peru Peru has yeah. been introducing pieces Very for uh, four years. And that's almost right. every year we have something new uh, from, uh, from Peru. That's great. It's, so this piece is from Peru too. Okay. Um, but it's not a new piece. 
I got it in a collection. Okay. And it's an old Pasto Bueno piece from the famous locality. Makes sense. He held yeah. on to it. Yeah. yeah. So this is from the original big find. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and with as uh, right when you backlight them, the the tips turn red. You know. Yes, uh, that's correct. They are different than the one from uh, Mundo Nuevo, were found uh, two three years ago who are darker. Those yes. ones are really the, the red tips. That's right. You can see a little bit of the color coming yeah. through there. And yeah. you, you have a second generation of quartz growing on the on the nerites. Okay. No, it's yeah, I can see that, yeah, underneath there. Yeah. It's Fantastic. really a ma major find from Oh, it's a uh, wonderful piece. Bueno. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. It's a big, giant white one. Twinning. In a grown crystallization there for a white one. That's a nice mm -mm, size mm -mm. to have a, a white one that size on the yeah. matrix. That's lovely. Okay. And then again from uh, from the Peru, you had uh, they found a, a very nice geode of um, pyrite with sphalerite. Very good. And yeah. if you check on the side and on the top of the piece, you can see that the the, um, the sphalerite is growing on the calcoparite, okay. you see? Here yeah. you have the calcoparite. Yes. And the sphalerite is growing on the, on the calco. Very good, okay. It was a big geode, but the, most of the pieces were totally damaged and I oh, was, I was okay. really lucky to save a yes. few pieces. Good for you. Yeah. And by the way, I have one special piece to show you from this pocket. Okay. My, my very favorite. Uh, Look at that. Oh, Look at this piece. Beautiful. Look at that thing. Oh, that's wonderful. And when did this come out? Just recently? Last summer. Last summer. Last summer. Boy, you can see some, uh, some calcopa right oh, here. Yeah. And there too. Yeah. You see that? That's a, so many of the interesting fun things about mineral collecting is the wonderful stuff that comes out every year there's something that yeah. comes out that's different mm -hmm. yeah, that's wonderful oh appetite look at that with a quartz this look at is that. wonderful because a big long quartz crystal with many appetite prisms on it that's wonderful and isn't that the, interesting the, that? the size of the bigger oh, crystals yeah, very much so Yeah, you don't see it with this quartz like that, and you've got so many individual crystals, mm -hmm. and then the one big one down here. Yeah, that's that, that's a wonderful piece. At the, at Is the, this old time stuff, or are they still? No, made? it's a it's a piece uh, from last year too. Wow. Well, yeah, from good. a new from okay, a new find. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Look here, you have the print of some older uh, oh, crystal yes, on, that's on, right. in the quartz. That's see, interesting. Where, <laughs> yeah, look <laughs> there at was that. Some you see that? Yeah, perfect hexagonal. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much. It's always a Appreciate pleasure it. to see you. Yeah, every Thank year. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, see you in St. Marumin. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm fine. Nice to meet you, Dave. Yeah, nice One to more see time you in Tucson. Yeah. It's amazing how fast the time goes. Mm, Seems yeah. like it was two months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, almost, uh, amazing. Almost. Well, you got some nice goodies to show us here. So let's see yes, what you have pleasure. brought us here. Yeah. Well, first, uh, from France in oh. the Pyrenees uh, mountain, uh, okay. which separates France from uh, Spain. Okay. Uh, there is near Po, um, in the bed of uh, one river, there's a strata with some geodes and with very fine, fine calcite, gemmy okay. calcite, plenty of extra faces and com complex twin. As you can see, this very, is... Uh, very, very fine. And this is from Spain? No, no, from France, from, oh, the, from, France. from the French okay. side oh, of, on the of French the Pyrenees. Okay, yeah. I got you. Look at the way that's twinned. That's beautiful. It's always nice when you have an isolation of the subject material yeah. matrix. That's beautiful. There was oh. a discovery in the Mont Blanc Massif on oh. the French side okay. in September. God, that's and wonderful. Reminds you of the Brazilian material yeah. from France. Yeah, yeah. That's a wonderful thing. And as you can see, thing. it's rehealed everywhere. Oh yes. In the back. Oh yeah, it's totally Even re in the bottom. Even the bottom. Yeah. Would you believe that? That, that is so interesting when it happens. It keeps growing and that stops and then it starts rehealing. Yeah, that's a wonderful piece. 
from France. Yes. Yeah, I would have never known that. Just sitting there, it's so different there. It's now, where's from this guy from? Ganesh in Nepal. Nepal. Um, this okay. one is from last year. Okay. It's just a simple quartz, oh, but, yeah, uh, but really the quartz. Yeah. Uh, so perfect, and it's yeah. from an unusual locality like that mm. to get a, a, a gemmy crystal like that. No, that's that's wonderful. The, this is from La Vidal mine. It's in Asprière, uh, Aveyron. Aveyron is southwest uh, okay. of the of the France of the Massif Central. Yeah. And um, this is a very old dump of a lead mine from the Middle Age very big big dump and some by somebody uh, bought the property and use a bulldozer to dig very okay. deep and you time to time you have some uh, piece of quartz and when you open it you you have those pyromorphite calcium rich uh, with a bright yellow yeah, it's a, a very the shape uh, campylite uh, like like yes. the old english uh, yeah. material but it's re yeah. it's pyromorphite. It's, it has it is pyromorphite, yes. not mimetite. Okay. But the color is really. Oh, it's wonderful. And there's a Very second different. shape. Mm -hmm. There's a second shape f coming from yeah. that mine. A That's kind of yellow green. Okay. And as you can see, there's even some stalactite. Yes, exactly. Sure is. And we discovered that those calcium-rich pyromorphite mm -hmm. um, um, fluoresced uh, deep orange under uh, UV short wave, okay. which is unusual, seems to be unusual for pyromorphite. Yeah, really, when you think of it. Something new from from Sean Watt oh, isn't that beautiful? in India. These are uh, stalactite of quartz yes with some chloride crystals and time to time some uh, doubly terminated uh, steel bite steel bite how did you put that <laughs> uh, i have a good glue and uh, some good work i mean it's an amazing <laughs> way they said why did that end up on there wouldn't yeah. you love to know the yeah, yeah, yeah. the n nature yeah double terminated and, too. And lovely you can notice it's even floater oh, because there's that? another zeolite oh, i don't know right. which one but yeah, all on the bottom recrystallized yeah. on the bottom and i have a hidden specimen okay something very special for me it's a uh, an aragonite okay. from saint marie aux mines that i self-collected when i was a teenager okay. in 1983 very good. Uh, we were a group, so that one was not in my in my part, and uh, I had the chance ten years ago to buy it back. Very good. Okay. Um, and finally, it was okay. pictured in the book of Saint Marie aux Mines. Yeah. Um, I. This is the back cover. Oh, look at that! How yeah. about that? And you also a full page. Very good. Yeah, let's get that right. Can you get that, Brian? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I show you also the calendar, the, the 2015 uh, calendar of Saint Marie aux Mines. Okay. And this is uh, Miss December. Oh, <laughs> isn't this something? Look at that. That is so cool. And I'm I hesitate a long a long time to separate from that specimen. I have others from that time. Yes. And uh, I'm very happy it find uh, his way uh, to uh, a good uh, collector and good friends uh, here in the US. Very good. The last one. Ooh. It is the Anglicite, Anglicite but yeah. really, really gem. Oh, yeah, it's you beautiful. Have it? yeah. Okay. yeah, got it. Really super gemmy. And gorgeous, good, yeah. intense color to it. Yeah, that's a lovely thing. Always been hard to get the Anglicites. Cerusite's different, but to get the mm -hmm. Anglicites yeah. when they're good, yeah, yeah, yeah. very difficult. It's to an get old those. timer from uh, Tuisit in Morocco. Yes. I think it has been found in uh, 1980. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Keep up the good work, and we'll see you next year. Again. See you. Appreciate being right. here. Yeah. Diana, Hi, Bob. always a pleasure. Always. always. You folks have great minerals. Oh, you know thanks. that. I don't even <laughs> have to tell you that. You can tell because they sell so well. <laughs> but, and you're very well known for your silvers, particularly. And there's one here. I've seen it photographed in books. I want to talk about it a little bit. Yeah. That's this beauty right here. Yeah. That is so amazing. 
Is is some of the coating on that uh, like a silver sofa salt or something? Oh, there's something. maybe a little acanthite yeah, on yeah, that yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's just such a tangle. Uh, it, you know, it, it it intrigues me to try and just wonder how the hell does the silver get that way? Yeah. You know, all this rapid growth in all directions. It's really quite amazing. Beautiful piece. I don't think I've ever seen a more aesthetically it's arranged. It's very pretty. Yeah, and nature just, did that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's no, nobody played with it. It's just a beautiful natural tangle of silver wires. Just great. Yeah. That is it's just nice. remarkable. A little bit of calcite on it too. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a little something. Yeah. See, that's just wonderful. It's amazing what that mine produced, and all because of a couple of sheep herding yeah. teenagers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. It. Yeah. They were actually, I was told, collected in uh, 1979. Really? And. Uh, it was a geologist at the mine who dug no, them all. What, what's the mine? It's uh, the Changa mine in Zambia. Zambia, okay. Yeah. So Look at the uh, size of those Yeah, they're, they're big. They're heavy. It's heavy. <laughs> that, that is copper carbon. Whoa! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they're really quite nice. They form in a clay zone? Or? He, he said it was not so much of a fault zone. It was just kind of a collapse zone, and it was real, uh, hmm. like you said, clay-like, and you yeah. know, just kind of picked them out of there. Yeah, look at the color. And he said he's, he's held them all these years. I mean, yeah. I said something to him. I said, well, I know I've had one of these in a past collection. And he said, well, I might have let three or four go in the early 80s. And somehow it ended up with me anyway. But uh, Beautiful. Yeah, they're, they're really nice azurites. And were, they're there, very, were there very many of them, or is uh, this it? From what I saw, you might have had 50 or 60, but who knows? Just, yeah, yeah, who knows? In a market like today, that, that yeah, won't last they, long. That doesn't last long. Yeah, they, they, wonderful. Yeah, so. From Brazil, you've got a twin here. Yeah. That's, this is remarkable. Yeah, that's, I think I've only seen one twin like that. I'm, I'm told that's early 1980s, late yeah. 70s again. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's 25 centimeters. <laughs> that is naturally crystallized on the right there. Yeah. That's a. <laughs> <laughs> if I've got the strength. God, look at that. What a beautiful twin. Yeah. <laughs> I was told there was only three or four that big. But, yeah, you know, I've only seen one of them. That's what you're told, you know. Yeah. And they're in museums. You mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. I, I recognized a little piece of turquoise yeah. that, that has a little story to it. Yeah. It's uh, in this case, it's from Kingman, Arizona. <clears throat> it's just an ordinary little specimen of turquoise, okay? But it was dug by the fellow who, whose grandfather developed the process. The, the successful process of stabilizing turquoise. Okay, Marty Colbois was, was the son, was the grandson's name. I don't know the grandfather's name. I visited Marty's shop one day, and he was stabilizing turquoise. And, you know, there's a lot of heat given off oh, yeah. during yeah. the stabilization process. Yeah. And if you look at the seal, he does it in one gallon cans with the lid on. And when you look at the ceiling, you see all these half moon digs <laughs> where the lids <laughs> had popped up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But when he dug these, he didn't know what he had for sure because of this odd pebbly surface. So he sent me a piece and I got a hold of Marcus Origlieri down here at the U of yeah. A and he scanned it. He you know, he did a probe on it and it is just pure turquoise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're pretty things. Yeah. For, any, for anybody who collects phosphates and likes turquoise, yeah. that's a very odd piece. Yeah. Very cute. Thank you for coming in. Thanks. All right. Appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the show. I will. Diana, thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce a recently appointed curator of the Harvard Mineralogical Museum, Raquel Alonso Perez. So pleased to meet you. Hi, pleased to meet you. Yeah, we're here to talk about the exhibits you have here in Tucson. Mm -hmm. And you've got so many wonderful specimens in there. Thank you. And the first thing I want to know is which of what you have on display is your favorite? First question, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know, it's hard to choose, but... Uh. Now earlier we were talking about the rutilated quartz mm -hmm. that was in there, and that was a very old specimen, as I understand. It was in uh, 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 Martin Ehrman's collection. Martin was a very famous early collector, and that was acquired on a trade with Los Angeles County Museum for another Martin Ehrman specimen, of all things, a tourmaline. Correct. A kunzite. A kunzite. Okay. Yes, one of the pink. It was is less 
quality color compared mm. to the ones that we have because it was on display for many years. I but see. it's part of the three Kuhn sites that we have from Kuhn's. All right. From yes. Kuhn's, George yes. Kuhn's. Wow. Yes. He donated to us in 1892 okay. and they came together with the OPA. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Have you seen the Opali Matrix on display? Yes, I did. Amazing. From Mexico. Yes. That's a beautiful piece. Really and that is. one, when you put it through the daylight, it yeah. has some amazing inclusions going through that you couldn't see. Yeah. And it took yeah. me years to realize the the, um, the, amai- the amount of inclusions the that the Opa yeah, has. Yeah. Beautiful. Obviously, that's one of your favorites. <laughs> it is right now because I'm studying opens. So yeah. I'm gonna be at the Sinkanka Symposiums talking about them. So I've All been right. going to the lab and putting yeah. different instruments. So I'm studying opens right now. Yeah. So learning more about about yeah. them. But that's not my final favorite. Okay, one. it's my seasonal favorite one. That's the one right now. I think the one I will go is the Pussyfire, the Appetite uh, from Maine. Collected by I don't know Terry Zenix. My, oh, our old okay. friend Terry Zenis. Okay, I, I, I called him Skippy in those yeah, days Skippy, when he yes. was a teenager. Yeah. Uh, there are a couple of the Pulsifer uh, mm-hmm. appetites that weren't. They were in the Karabacek collection on display here. Yes. And I don't think Terry dug those because Karabacek was... I think was, they are older. Yeah. yeah Maybe. Yeah. yeah. The, the Harvard is famous follow. for its for its good pulsifer yes. appetites. Yeah, one of the best. Great actually. stuff. And you're also famous for your gold collection, the big okay. the big ram's horn. Yes. You have one gold on display. It's, it's a small one. It's sort of arrow mm-hmm. shaped. Yes. It's a cute little thing. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. And yeah. the the good thing about that specimen is both sides is crystalline. Yeah. So yeah. you can really see the nice uh, triangular shape of, right. of gold. Yeah, those, so it's beautiful. Yeah. Those crystals are all uh, elongated octahedrons, I believe. Yes, aren't they? and yeah. they, it's an old collection. It all belongs to the Bouglis, which was acquired by Burrage. Right. Also late <clears> 1800. <throat> Yeah. One year, no, this is some time ago, I asked Carl Francis, your predecessor, if yeah. I could photograph some of the golds. Mm-hmm. And he agreed. And okay. so I went to Harvard, and we, he, we got a flight bag, and we walked across the commons to a vault where the golds were stored. And I was yes. allowed to pick out the ones I photographed. Mm-hmm. And there we were, walking across Harvard commons, carrying several million dollars in gold, you know. <laughs> and... Uh, so I was able to photograph them. That was one of the pieces I had picked nice, out, so it's yeah. my favorite. Another specimen you have there down in the lower shelf is a zincite mm-hmm. from Franklin, New Jersey. And that is just Very amazing. Special. That is, I don't know if it's the world's finest, but boy, it sure comes close. It yeah. is just marvelous. You know, it's a crystal about like yeah. that. It's just Wicked. Our Franklin collection is amazing. Nice. But the whole collection is among 4,000 specimens, only Franklin. Wow. So we are the main repository of Franklin, New Jersey. Yeah. 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 It's That's a real amazing. collection, yes. Yeah. I love it when you put the fluorescent light on. Of course. Of course. <laughs> That's and everyone yeah. that and comes I, to the museum yeah. and we do it. I, yeah. I suspect there are some fluorescent minerals in your collection that, mm-hmm. that have not been identified yet because they're still finding rare minerals that fluoresce from Franklin. They're just now finding some of them. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember how many there are now. It's over 70 or 80 at least that fluoresce. In that locality? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Let's see. There were some other things. Now, you had a, a really nice Chinese calcite mm-hmm. that... Iceland. So, kind of, I, oh, I, I, I'm sorry. Me, yes. I apologize. No, no. Yeah. Iceland, of course, is Iceland Spar, of yeah. course. Yeah. It's a rare one. Yeah. I, I saw a program recently that, that demonstrated that the, um, the Norsemen used double reflecting calcite as mm-hmm. their guide when they wanted to navigate in, on cloudy days on the ocean. That's, that's really quite they remarkable. They used it as a mirror and yeah. to position the surf on the sea. Yeah, they could detect the yeah. sun even when it wasn't visible. Yeah. That's amazing, it just is. amazing. Minerals you know, are everywhere. Uh, we, don't, uh, we, you know, we don't give early people enough credit for the intelligence that they showed in the, mm-hmm. in the knowledge that they learned. One of the specimens that you have on display here is a tur- green, jolly green, I'll call it jolly green giant mm-hmm. two uh, from Maine. Mm-hmm. That was a part of the uh, big find that was made at the Dunton Quarry up in Maine. Uh, the, the original jolly green giant is in Smithsonian and you have the companion for it. I mean, it's the same shape, same color, a yeah. little bit shorter, but a really remarkable thing. And next to it, you have a nice, uh, uh, watermelon slice Beautiful of that. One. Yeah, that was a that was an amazing find, of course. The main, the strength of the Harvard collection is New England. Yes, it's the New England yes. region and it's and rare species. 
So we have a lot from turma, uh, a lot of tourmalines from Maine, uh, Connecticut, but mainly tourmalines from right, Maine. Right, and we also yeah. have some of the. Uh, have you seen the peach, the rose of Maine? Yes, yes, it's on display. yes. It's a yeah, beautiful. It's a marvelous yes, morganite. It yeah, is. wonderful. You might yeah. know the story of that. Unfortunately, yes, I do. You do. Uh, yeah, there was a large crystal that they yes. broke up. Yes, yeah, and yeah. then what a shame. And that's the center. That's one yeah. of the pieces. That was out of the center. Yeah, I think so. That's where the good color was. Yeah. yeah beautiful. Yeah. You know, that was one of Carl's goals was to have a nice uh, New England collection. Mm -hmm. And years ago, they found some polyacite at the Gottawallen Pro Prospect in Connecticut, and I was able to trade a fella for a faceted polyacite from there, and. I gave it to the gem uh, collection. It's Harvard. on display at the Is it really? It is. Oh, good. It is. <laughs> the good thing to hear. is, we cannot bring everything out. Is uh, we have the collection itself is four hundred thousand specimens. Oh my God! Between rocks, meteorites, gems, and minerals. Yeah. So we just decide we always balance with fragile minerals mm -hmm. because it's a long mm -hmm. travel that we can carry. So we, I think we did a good, a good oh, yeah. job in yeah. bringing yeah. really it's highlights display. combined with not that yeah. really good. great, but good specimens. Yeah. yeah, good display. Thank you. Now, with 100,000 specimens, yes. what are you going to do about housing them? What's in the future? So we are now working with the university because we have three off-site facilities. So we are trying to bring everything under the same roof. Mm -hmm. So we start working with an external consultant in Canada that he has done many other projects with different museums. Right. So we, we accounted everything that we need. We have all developed plans. So we know we need 11,000 square feet to Excellent. rehouse the whole Excellent. collection. Yeah. So now we are yeah. working with the university to look for, for that facility. I see. And there is few options. So that might take still being talk, you know, universities is a, it's a lot of bureaucracy mm -hmm. and it's a slow, but when yeah. it comes, it comes. So we are working on that. That's one of our main goals for the next five years is right. having everything in one house, in one place. And the other main goal I have for the collection is uh, create a mineral vault. Uh -huh. So, I mean, you, like as you said, yeah. some of our goal is at the bank. Right, right. So if we want to show and have it, we have to go to the bank, bring it in house. So it's not, and it should be out in the public. Yeah. It should be out yeah. for the public. It was okay. years ago. I yes. remember photographing the, the old white sloping case that had all the golds in it in, mm -hmm. on the main aisle in the, in the museum. Yes. Yeah. That'll be nice to see those back. So that's what yeah. we, we are working on that. Again, yeah. the university is helping us, but we need the funding. Okay. But we have, yeah. we have the space. We don't need that big. We were thinking 400, 600 square feet and have some cases where we can have low, um, external people to exhibit their specimens. Oh, so making yeah. a rotation. Good so idea. we have our own good things. <coughs> but also, so it's more temporary because our gallery is really it's a permanent gallery. Yeah. And we want to create yeah. more rotational exhibits. So there is more a bit more active. Yeah, there's, a, a, movement. Yeah, there's, a, <laughs> yeah, there's a trend in that direction in other museums, mm -hmm. trying to get yes. outsiders also to Also with other museums. Like, it would be nice yeah. to get something from the Smithsonian, sure. from the Lake County Museum. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And you have a site picked out where the building will be? It's not a building. It will be a room between four or 600 square feet, and it's outside the main gallery. So we okay. have the space, the design is there, and now we are working fundraising. Mm -hmm. The collection started at the chemistry department. Mm -hmm. So they were okay. doing analyzing, as you know, they were yeah. studying the chemistry sure. on the atoms and I guess calcite, the one that we know about. And it was a small collection and it was a, a French uh, ambassador who donated a few specimens. Okay. It was a set of marbles and some instruments. And that was located somewhere in downtown Boston in the center, in one of the old buildings. Mm. And then at some point it became part of the it was in, at that point, Earth and Planetary Science Department, but moved slowly into geology. So it was Agassi, Luis Agassi. Okay. He was the founder of the Peabody Museum. Right. And he wanted to have a really coherent natural history collection for the public. Yeah, so that, he, was, that was the trend in the old days. You, had, you just didn't have minerals or fossils. You had a, a broad science collection of things. Exactly, yes. Mm. So Agassi started and he, acquired, he got that collection from the chemistry department mm -hmm. and then start putting that into the, what is today the natural history museum at harvard university yeah. and that's where i steal the collection yeah. actually our cabinets are older than the building itself 
Oh, the I cabinets see. still on display, they are from the 1862. Hmm. And the building was built in 1890, I believe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So the cabinets are all there, the building, and then as I said, for example, the opal, all that Kunz material is 1800. Right. And then you know that was the first, the first curator then went through uh, Professor Cook. Okay. Then Palachi was a uh, very famous, very famous, yeah, really yeah. Uh, the yeah. tons of science with quartz, especially in the Second War and yeah. before. And <coughs> then um, from then, so there is a a whole legacy yeah, of decades curators, and, decades, yeah, yeah, and yeah, curating yeah. the collection. Yeah. Palachi was famous for his Franklin book. That was, mm -hmm. that was the Bible of Franklin for so long. Yeah. Yes. You know, one of the things that I really admire about Harvard and its mm -hmm. collection. After World War II, uh, the sciences went in different directions and the emphasis was less on museums and minerals than on other things because of the space program, whatever. And uh, many, many museums began putting their collections away to get space to uh, accommodate all of the veterans and people coming out of the service who wanted to go to college and there were no offices, no classrooms. Mm -hmm. And so mineral collections in some museums almost disappeared. Harvard did not. No. Harvard kept theirs on display. And I'm really happy about that. Yeah. The, the collection is outstanding. Cap Francis did amazing 30 years of proper curating the collection. So the only left behind child is the rock collection. The rock collect and it's the one I love. Ah. So it's the one I'm taking care of. So okay. trying to bring on the collections because we have gems, meteorites, the minerals and the okay. rocks. So trying to bring all the collection Good at the you. same level. That's great. Great. Yeah. No. It's an amazing collection, taking care. Well I'm sure you we have, have a great team. So. You have the support of the mineral community. That's one yeah. yes, we do. And the university also. I know many people think Harvard and yes, Harvard is there, but <laughs> Museums also have to be uh, out there fighting for the same part. Yeah, of, uh, of course, yes. of course. Like well. university museums are different than other, mm. other museums. Well, good luck with your you. ventures. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. A pleasure.